Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of the happiest hour on earth. It's been a minute since we've done a movie episode, a Disney movie episode. We've done a lot of park based stuff in the last couple of months, I would say, and we yeah. decided it's time to return to the movies. We love talking about Disney films and if you know Disney well, you know that from the beginning of Disney movie history to now, we have eras of movies and some are better than others and we have ranked them. Oh yeah, At it's least, a, it was a tough task. Yeah, it was very hard. This is our opinion. This is our opinions, but as we get closer to the best, we do have some differing opinions. Yeah. So, so our number one and number yeah. two are kinda, little, a little, we, we have yeah. different answers, I would say, for, for what takes the number one spot. So it was a tough task. There's a lot of great movies in all of these eras, honestly, but especially once you get down to the, the ones where we have ranked one and two. So, yeah, so tough. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a fun episode. So we're really excited. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. All right, so like Emily said, we love talking about Disney movies. We actually did an episode a long time ago, very long ago, where we took each era and said what was our favorite in each era. But tonight, instead of ranking or talking about our favorite in each era, we are going to be actually ranking them around. So um, Mm. some you might be like, okay, yeah, totally. That makes makes sense. sense. Uh, Others you might be like, ooh, this is, you know, I would have put that higher. I would have put that lower. But we are, we really want to know what you guys think because everyone has their favorites. You know, some of your favorites might be in an era that we put lower. Um, Mm -hmm. But some, you know. Everybody has their opinions. They do. I know, because you have special connections two certain movies and that definitely uh it's subjective we'll definitely Mm -hmm. put an era above the others but this is what we came up with and we agreed on all of them except for the last two yeah uh so stick around to hear what those are but before we jump into it just a reminder if you are looking to book a vacation or want some awesome disney goods um we have some links in our descriptions you know get away today we have some savings there we also partner with uh park hop teas and magic candle company and so you could find our codes below and our links there so save up get your disney fix yes and uh and it helps our show as well so you know you guys get something good and we get something too yeah it definitely helps out our show so with that i think we are ready to jump in We are starting seventh place. And so the interesting thing here, before we get into it, we are currently in the revival era that started in 2010. Most of these eras last between 10 to about 20 years. Mm -hmm. So the, the revival era, we are now about 13 years in. I'm not sure when more movies come out. We might be... We might actually put some movies that are already out currently in a different era. Mm-hmm. But right now, since we don't have a defined era, they're kind of sticking within that Love revival them. era. But I'm very curious to see, as Disney puts out more movies, what's defining revival and what's going to be know. defining the new one. Um, very interesting. Yeah, we have Wish coming out later this year, mm-hmm. which is also, I feel like, another fairy tale esque type movie. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure if that's going to stick within revival or bring it out. Because the last one they did was Strange World, which was very different, I feel like, than Wish. Mm -hmm. So really curious to see what the future of Disney movies kind of have in store. But It's changing a lot. It is. But we're going to start with our seventh place. Emily, can you let the listeners know what we have? So there are seven eras. We're starting with the seventh. The worst. The last place for us. So that would have to be... The wartime era, which was from 1943 to 1949. So it lasted about six years. Yeah. Um, so those movies include Saludos Amigos, Three Caballeros, Make My Music, Fun and Fancy Free, Melody Time, The Adventures of Ichabod, and Mr. Toad. Yeah. So some weird, this was a very weird time of Disney history. Um, this was the second Disney era, so right after the Golden Age, 
um, you know, with some amazing favorites that we'll talk about soon. But this was during World War II when everyone was kind of focused on the war. And so mm-hmm. um, this meant lower budgets for Disney and their films, smaller teams of animators as well. Um, this era was also called the package era because these films weren't like full length feature films mm-hmm. like we know. There were multiple kind of like short stories within Combined into one, one type movie. of thing. So if you think about the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, that's a one one story and then another story. Mm-hmm. Um, Fun and Fran- Fancy Free, you yep. used to watch a lot. And watch. was that two stories or multiple? Uh, it was a couple, right? Yeah, it might have been three. If I look back on it, yeah. there might have been like one kind of short one and then two that were a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those were those. Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. It was an interesting time in Disney history. Yeah. Disney movie history because it just doesn't feel like anything that we really know now. Yeah. But it, yeah, it, it's very that's why we had to put it last. Like there is a pretty bad era that we're gonna be talking about soon, but this one had to get last place just because and no no fault on Walt Disney Studios. I mean, there was an unprecedented war that was taking place and so things um, aren't gonna be at their top notch yeah they're still cranking out movies just very very different than Mm -hmm. what we know today and so and honestly there are some here that we have not seen um but the ones we have seen they're fun watches but it's not like on regular rotation so Mm -hmm. they uh congrats you got uh last Last place place wartime era i'm so sorry (laughs) um but next up we got sixth place do you want to do you want to talk about this one sixth place is going to the post renaissance era which was from 2000 to 2009 yeah this was a pretty bad era pretty bad era but there There's are some favorites winners. that we definitely there are watch. Some good ones. <laughs> I won't I won't ignore them. But yeah, I was overall it was not a great time. Uh so the movies included in post Renaissance were Fantasia 2000, Dinosaur, Emperor's New Groove, Atlantis, The Lost Empire, Lilo and Stitch, Treasure Planet, Brother Bear, Home on the Range, Chicken Little, Meet the Robinsons, and Bolt. Quite yeah. a few. So in which ones of, yeah, in that night, yeah, right? There was a, a lot, lot in the nine years span. Which ones can you tell our listeners stuck out to us and that we still watch to That are good? Day? Yeah. <laughs> the good ones, I would say, are definitely Emperor's New Groove and Lilo and Stitch. However, uh, Dinosaur was one I always used to like when I was young. I used to watch it, yeah. And I Atlantis, I feel like. I Atl- like yeah. I I really liked Atlantis when I was younger. I haven't watched it in a while. And so. I, yeah, most of the other ones. Oh no, we watched Brother Bear recently. Actually, it was actually it was yeah, cute. it's really cute. It's cute. It's not like a favorite, but it wasn't horrible. I feel like a lot of movies in this era, um, just like Brother Bear, like especially as you get towards the end, so sweet, so memorable, love it. But there's certain parts in you know, earlier on, or maybe just certain parts of uh, some of these movies just don't really, you just don't really hit as well. Them, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of like a zone out during, during them. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of like how it is with brother bear. Cause we rewatched it. And at the beginning I was like, okay, come on. you know, but then near the end, I was like, man, this is such a good um, resolution to this movie. I yeah. loved it. Um, also there are huge treasure planet fans out there. Um, that was one I never really grew up with, but you know, shout out to all the Treasure Planet fans because that has a yeah. big uh, fan base, I feel like, as and well. And so but does Meet the Robinsons. Yes, there another, are a lot of Meet the Robinsons fans. Yeah, that's another kind of like cult favorite, I feel like. Um, yeah, that we we had seen and I like the twist at the end, but it wasn't one that I was like dying to see again. Yeah, I don't same. Know. I, I was like, I feel like maybe I dozed off in it. I don't know. I It, yeah. it just didn't like connect with me super mm-hmm. well but i know a lot of people love it um and that's great i mean if, if, if any of these connect with you in yeah. that way then that's amazing chicken little chicken home little is range. like mm, yeah I, we've never seen home on the range every time i think of home on the range i just kind of like cringe even though i haven't yeah. seen it there's just something about it that it's cringe maybe for sure we should do a um a movie or an episode where we just watch movies that we've 
been adverse to I for a very long time. I don't think I'm willing time. to put myself to that task. Home on the Range? <laughs> I don't think so. And Chicken Little. Have you even seen Chicken Little? I, I no. saw it in theaters and I was like, oh. Like a lot so of bad. these just don't feel like a Disney, a Disney movie. movie. Like yeah. they feel like it would be like DreamWorks or, you know, one of the like. And yeah, that that's just kind of where I stand. Well, you know what's very interesting is that during this time. Oh, I haven't even defined this era. So, oh, yeah. um. Real quick, so this period is really defined by Disney trying to do a new method of storytelling. So around this time, actually right before this, Pixar had come out with a few movies. I think it was Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Toy Story 2, right, in the 90s. Um, And so Disney was like, are people getting tired of 2D animation? We got to try our hand at CGI, you know, computer 3D animation and so this was an era where they're focused on new technology over story so i feel like they're so focused on the new technology that story was just kind of thrown out. yeah it was a little mm-hmm. lackluster and so dinosaur was the first cgi animation i remember going um to dinosaur and remembering that because my dad was like oh yeah this is like something new that's for disney and i think around the time of chicken little there because disney Disney partnered with Pixar for the first couple of movies, but they still wanted to, you know, to do do their their own own thing. thing. And I think around the time of Chicken Little, they were about to split or part ways because Pixar was like, we could do this on our own. And so um, I think around the time of Chicken Little, they're like, okay, well, maybe we don't even need Pixar. We could just do our own thing. And then they just kept bombing with the CGI stuff. So, um, So this... Whole era. I mean, there's no like fairy tale princess kind of theme in this era at all, mm-hmm. and so that might explain um, why it was such a dud. Because as we go through these eras, you could see the ones that focus on fairy tales, which are my favorite movies from Disney, do the best. So, um, agreed. Yeah. Oh man. So definitely an interesting era, but definitely better than wartime era yeah um, there's even a though couple there were some, in there emperor's new yeah. groove never gets old our son currently is obsessed with that movie that's one of his favorites yeah. ever and he was obsessed with lilo and stitch so he's yeah. a big post renaissance he, yeah <laughs> he, he would not be ranking this so low yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. um, but yeah those are some good ones for sure i mean overall i would say it's just not a great era but there were there were some winners there were some winners for sure yeah, yeah. should we jump into fifth fifth place yes Moving on, our fifth place ranking is the Bronze Age, which was from 1970 to 1988. So the movies included here were The Aristocats, Robin Hood, Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Rescuers, Fox and the Hound, The Black Cauldron, The Great Mouse Detective, and Oliver and Company. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, what What are your standouts here? Definitely. I mean, it's not, it's not all bad. I love yeah. Robin Hood and the Aristocats. Aside from that, I don't know a lot of these movies well. Like I've seen, I, mean, I think Fox I watched. Fox and the Hound is. Yeah. Fox yeah. and the I Hound mean, was a good classic, one. I mean, it's sure. very sad. So it was never like a favorite movie of mine, but it is, it's a good movie. Like it was, it was felt Disney. Like it definitely yeah. had the emotion of a Disney movie. Yeah. But a lot of the other ones, yeah, I mean, Winnie the Pooh, obviously, everybody loves, but... Um, the Black Cauldron was, like, one of the worst Disney Really weird, films. weird yeah. time. Great Mouse Detective, I only watched once, and I think it was with you. I grew up with that one. Um, it's not one that I, like, care, care to see, you mm-hmm. know, all the time. Um, but there are some... There are some great mouse detective stands out there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <They're>, um, <laughs> we know a couple of them. Some of our friends, Phil and Lauren, love the great mouse detective. <laughs> yeah. It's a, gr- it's a good movie, but it. I just, you know, it's, it's, yeah, you know, it's, like it's not one I want to watch. And Oliver and Company, I don't actually think I've seen either, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, I think we have another friend that loves that one, Chris Lowe. Oh. Oh hey yeah yeah. Um, I I used to watch it a little bit, but yeah, it was it's not on like some that I would watch all the time but yeah, yeah aristocats robin hood um fox and the hound i'd watch more if it wasn't super sad but it had an impact on me so that's why yeah. you know i put it up there with some of the the greats quote unquote but so what defined this era was it was the first era after walt disney's death 
And they kind of struggled to find their way. Yeah. Because it's the first period of movies where they didn't have his direction. This was a time where they deserted some fairy tale stories, just like the post-Renaissance era. There yeah. wasn't any like princess movies during this time. Um, this was also a shift from hand inked films uh, to xerography. Um, and so th- a lot of people call this era the scratchy film era um, because the technology xerography uh, during this time only kind of it like almost highlighted the black lines that they were doing mm-hmm. and not necessarily the color. So you could go back to these movies and um, and really see these like heavy, dark tones um, yeah, within the, the intense black lines. And so this was also, I guess, an, in a way, um, a transitionary period from handing films mm-hmm. to um, to xerography. And they were kind of trying to find their way. But um, yeah, it's. It was a very different era for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But there were some standouts here. So yeah, it's a uh, third worst. Yeah. Fifth best. So yeah, that's why we, we had to <laughs> put it on there. Um, yeah. So I feel like this next one, fourth and third, fourth and third could be maybe a little interchangeable. interchangeable. Yeah. Interchangeable there. I feel like I watch fourth place more than third place but third place has to be where it's at in terms of like best with ranking yeah i would i would say so yeah okay do you want to hit us off with fourth place yeah fourth place is going to be going to the revival era which is the one that we're currently in so 2010 to now which means we have princess and the frog tangled winnie the pooh wreck it ralph Frozen, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Moana, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Frozen 2, Raya and the Last Dragon, Encanto, and Strange World. That's a lot of movies for 13 years. a lot. Years. No kidding. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we... If they like if there's a break. into another. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these movies are favorites of ours. Oh, yeah. Um, but then a lot are... Like we don't we don't really watch Wreck It Ralph too much. I've never much. really cared for Wreck It Ralph at all, either one. I actually did we no, we did see the internet. One in theaters, the I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they're not bad movies necessarily. I've just never really cared to rewatch them. Yeah. They're what just, are what are our standouts here? Um ugh, well, Princess and the Frog for sure, Tangled, yeah. Frozen for me. Moana. Oh, Moana. Yeah. Moana is probably is so high yeah it is up there um, frozen and frozen 2 are both really good yeah movies that still we love but we don't watch as often um raya and kanto um zootopia yeah but the the other ones i still yeah. haven't seen big hero six i know we gotta sorry it, it is sorry, really good i know i need you need to watch yeah it. i probably Oof. should brush up on it before um things officially switch to Oh, San Francisco. <laughs> it's actually looking really good in the park. So I'm 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 excited for that for sure. Um yeah, yeah no, we we gotta watch it. Um yeah. so it's called the revival era because this was in 2010 after the post-Renaissance era, which wasn't the best films at all. But then they came out with Princess and the Frog. Incredible so movie. Good. So good. So this is this era is also called the second Disney Renaissance because of what I just said. Um, huge box office numbers here. Uh, return of Princess Films with the those Broadway numbers that you just know and love so well. I mean, thinking about Princess and the Frog, Tangled, Frozen, Moana. Oh, so incredible. Um, it started with a return to traditional animation with Princess and the Frog. Mm-hmm. Like they were trying which to figure out to do the CG and everything, and they went back to 2D, which I really am excited uh, to see again hopefully soon wish is kind of a weird blend of like 2d and 3d uh, yeah, from the trailer really so i'm curious to see how that's going to play out mm-hmm. um frozen became the highest grossing animated film of all time it's now in third place frozen 2 is in number one wow um and number two is uh the super mario's brother movies and then uh that's crazy and then third is frozen but yeah i mean frozen just blew everything up Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, not sure when this era is ending and when the new one will begin, but that's going to be very, very, um, 
very kind of exciting to see mm -hmm. where they put the line. Is it going to be sometime in the future from now in 2023? Or are they going to kind of place that little marker yeah. a little bit earlier? Because There's not enough movies to really I'm decide. What I'm confused about yeah. is how they've done it up till now. Like, when were the eras created? Because it feels like this era is lasting the longest for sure. So it's been 13, 13 years. years. Um, I'm going up here. So this was 18 years. Uh, oh, yeah. Bronze Age okay, was about true. 18 years. Um, the, yeah, nine, there's some that are nine. Six. There's some that are six. Yeah, so I think it really is defined post, like, once you get out, out of, of that era. era. Yeah. Now, I could see, I could see them making a new era when like 2020 hit because mm. a lot of these movies Things came out a lot on streaming. <laughs> right. So there was like a, a, a notable shift. Right. So um, instead of people working in office, people were working on these movies at home and that kind of shifts things. So um, movies in the past, there's just kind of a significant point where there's a change, mm -hmm. but we won't really know that until we kind of look back on it and there's like a good group of movies that we could put into a new era. So mm -hmm. I could definitely see them going back though and saying, um, like where are we at here? I don't it, know. I don't know how they probably would bring it off. Well, Raya was probably worked on a little bit during that time, but I think it did. I think we saw that, uh, at home. Mm -hmm. I think that was we during did. the time. So that and Kanto strange world all came out during that period and so yeah i think that could that definitely could be the probably defining time. be a defining time because frozen 2 we saw in theaters mm -hmm. and everything was cool and chill back then yeah. so yeah i could see them being lumped into a new thing um yeah, we'll but see. yeah so next up we are getting into our third place we have three more eras to go this is where it gets Oof. well i guess fourth is where it kind of got tough but now it's really tough yeah do you want to hit us off yeah so third place we have placed the golden age, which was from 1937 to 1942. Yeah. Five year span. Short one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this was the beginning. This yeah. Was, this was the first Disney movie. So we have Snow White, Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, and Bambi. All classics. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Once again, they're not necessarily ones that we watch often any of them, but they're all such classics. They had to be ranked high. They were, it was like the building blocks for what everything we else. came to yeah. know as Disney movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, so good. Yeah. The defining moments here was that, you know, Walt's bold decision to make the first ever feature length animated film that was never done before. Mm -hmm. um, all these movies were overseen by Walt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And also this was the groundwork for like Disney trends, right? Snow White was like princess fairy tale mm -hmm. movies. Pinocchio was turning literature into like child friendly films. And then Bambi and Dumbo animal centered movies. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the three big ones that I think the three big trends that Disney follows and Anytime it follows that, I think it's a great Disney yeah. movie, right? Like, I agree. Princess Fairy Tale is my favorite. Um, I guess literature in my mind, kind of like Pinocchio, those just kind of go into my head with like fairy tale stuff. Mm -hmm. But then animal centered movies too. Um, yeah, definitely. are always really great. Um, love that they always brought people in, uh, or sorry, not people, but animals in yeah. to the uh, studio, studio to like see their movements and and animate those Make movements lifelike as possible which yeah. they definitely did i mean it's amazing to watch those movies and think about what they were working with at the time yeah they just had to sketch everything yeah and it's all done so well i know it's i That's mean crazy. it's insane to think about like how bad technology was then oh my gosh and what yeah. they were able to create just based on all the drawings that were done 1937 that's crazy. Oh, and um, it's just so... Like, yeah. Sorry. To, like, imagine getting to, like, be there for a day of, like, them animating or, like, sketching and just oh, see yeah. the process of what they all went through would be so cool. 
Yeah, and matching things to the voices and mm-hmm. all this stuff. Um, Another reason that we love the Walt Disney Museum because you can really kind of feel what it was like. Yeah, at that time to to have to animate a film. Yeah, oh, it's so a lot crazy. of work. And another thing that really defines this era is um, it was also called the tar and sugar era, um, meaning usually there were some really dark moments in the Mm -hmm. movies. And then they were kind of coupled next to it like a sweet part. And so that's one reason I feel like we don't tend to watch them all the time. Like you think about Snow White, she's lost in the woods and it's all these trees with like faces and super scary. And the guy trying to come cut her heart out. Yeah. (laughs) And then all of a sudden she's at the cottage and you get this musical number with the dwarves. Um, Mm -hmm. And then Bambi. Yep. He's having a great time with Thumper. He's, you know, in the snow. And then his mom dies. Like there's... It, these movies are a little bit harder to watch for me personally, but the thing is why it had to be in our top three is, is just like unprecedented that people would make an animated movie. And we see all these animated movies today. If the golden age never happened, we would probably not have animated movies or they wouldn't yeah. be what they were today. And so um, it's, true. it's uh, they laid the groundwork for not only Disney movies, but animated movies in general and storytelling in general so Mm -hmm. so good had to give it had to give it to them okay so so this is where we differ this is where we differ okay um who who goes first okay so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna say what my second place is and then he's gonna say what his second place is and then we'll let you yeah see that they're the reverse of each other so for me second place goes to the disney renaissance which was from 1989 to 1999 and it's very hard to place it there because some of these are definitely favorites um you've got the little mermaid the rescuers down under Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules, Mulan, and Tarzan. Yeah. So Very hard to rank that as second place. Yeah. Well, and it's very hard to put the next one, which I'm going to talk about, in second place as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was very, very tough. I, I could see them interchange, you know? Yeah. Depending on my mood. But so my second place, and this is very tough to put a second, my first. is the Silver Age, which was from 1950 to 1967. These movies included Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Lady and the Tramp, Sleeping Beauty, 101 Dalmatians, Sword in the Stone, The Jungle Book. So should we talk? Okay, wait. Do, so yeah, what are your favorites? Let's, let's talk about Silver Age since I just talked about it. What are your favorites in... Okay, so now you know. Yeah. Uh, first place for me is the Disney Renaissance, which we'll talk about shortly. Mm-hmm. First place for you is the one we're going to be talking about right now, yeah. which is the Silver Age. Um, I, what are your favorites in this era? So I had to rank it first personally because my two favorites of all time are in that era, which is Cinderella and Peter Pan. Those are my two ultimate favorites forever. And for me, I don't know. I love pretty much all of the movies in this era. That, that's kind of what did it for me. Like the only one that I'm kind of like, kind like I've only really seen it once all the way through is Sword in the Stone. Still a great movie and still definitely belongs with all of these ones in this ranking, I would say. Yeah. But I have... No, none of these are like movies that I don't like. I love all of them. They're very Disney. Like when you think of classic Disney, a lot of these movies and for are me, what you think of. That's what defines the best Disney movies is the ones that bring about that nostalgia and yeah. the the music, which I know the music in the neck in the other era is yeah, incredible, so which we'll talk about. But for me, just the the sound, like, I mean, when those titles would start in the very beginning That's of all true, these yeah, movies, yeah. nothing gets me more just in the Disney zone than that. <laughs> and yeah. I just love all of these so much. And 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Sleeping Beauty is one of my favorite classics. 101 Dalmatians is so good. Jungle Book. Yeah, Alice, this had a Lady in the Tramp. I mean, this had a wide range of everything, right? You had Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty with the princess theme. Peter Pan as just like a youthful, rambunctious mm-hmm. theme. You had your animals in there, Lady in the yeah. Tramp and 101 Dalmatians. And everything. Jungle Book, you got the trippy in there. They even added that in Alice in Wonderland. Mm-hmm. Um, Stone Stone medieval movie that yeah. we don't really get too often. So, yeah, that is really... everything. Yeah, it was so good. Um, and it was the last era that Walt really had a hand in before That's true. Died. Yeah, yeah. So It was a big part of that. He time. was... The uh, the last movie was The Jungle Book that he, you know, he passed during the production of that. And that was the last movie in this era. So he had his hand on everything before that, which is just so magical. Mm-hmm. Um, this is also known as the Restoration Age uh, because it was the return to big budget feature length films mm-hmm. after the wartime era. Um, this was also a return to fairy tales and animal focused animation. So I think whenever Disney kind of focuses, it's hard because it's like you want new stories and all that stuff. But really, I feel like in my mind, the best movies are either fairy tales or like, you know, versions of fairy tales, right? Mm -hmm. Like even frozen is based off of the, what's it called? The snow queen or like, um, you know, fairy tale, but they make it their own. Or even if they just make up a fairy tale, as long as it has that fairy tale aspect, I think that is really Disney. And then anything with animals. So mm-hmm. this age had a lot of that, and had all the it's so good. It was on. It's it's honestly right there, right up there with the Disney Renaissance in my mind. But yeah, the reason I had to go with the Disney Renaissance era is because even though there were a few duds i feel like no i guess there's one kind of quote-unquote dud and then a few movies that i don't really watch as often Mm -hmm. this was my childhood and yeah where yours is like when you think of disney you think of these movies because of the like the history and the magic of like original disney filmmaking Mm -hmm. in my mind what puts this above is because that's kind of my childhood with disney so the ones that really stick out here Little Mermaid, of course, um, was never like the biggest Rescuers fan. Yeah. Um, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, Pocahontas, um, Mulan, and Tarzan. I I didn't watch Hunchback and Hercules as yeah. as much when I was uh, growing up. I don't know if my parents didn't want me to be scared in uh, <laughs> Hunchback. Um, cool. And then Hercules, I don't know. We didn't watch it often. Mm -hmm. Um, So this was right after the Bronze Age. So it was really the return to like Disney greatness. Mm -hmm. Um, Little Mermaid was actually the first fairy tale movie in almost 20 years in Disney history. And this is what really started the Broadway formula. Mm -hmm. Um, So the Broadway formula is just the idea that any of these movies could easily be turned into a Broadway. And so this was started with Alan Menken doing the music and Howard Ashman doing the lyrics and just thinking about that, uh, Howard, uh, you know, documentary on Disney plus and just the, the bond that they had together and how he passed way too soon. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly the music that Alan Menken made and the lyrics that Howard Ashman made, and it was this team where they just did so many of these movies um, there was just a cohesion there that was just so magical. Um, mm-hmm. all yeah. the, all, all the songs, when you hear these songs, you just, that's your, I mean, that just brings you to Disney greatness. That's um, but yeah, the, just the films here were so well crafted and um, done so well. And so that's why I put it in first place, but honestly, silver age and Renaissance, Renaissance can really be interchangeable, but that is our ranking of these incredible films. Some obviously had some films that weren't favorites and they probably won't be watched as much today. And so I think this is important to realize that as we talk about certain movies, some movies are box office kind of failures. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, um, usually that I think propels creativity 
and uh, something new. You know, you, you take a look at that. A lot of these things are called like, you know, a lot of these are returned to the mm -hmm. greatness, the renaissance, the revival after yeah. these bad periods. And so I think whenever we have times where it could be a little bit off, know that there's greatness just right around the corner. Yeah, they're um, probably working on something that's going to blow our minds again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so that's the cool thing is we can't lose hope even if there's some movies that came out recently that aren't our favorites, um, they're going to they're gonna get back up there. And I, I'm really interested to see Wish. Uh, we're obviously filming this before that, mm -hmm. if you're checking it out um, after the movie comes out. But that one looks very interesting, and I'm very excited to see it. Yeah. But i um, curious to see what else is in Disney's animation pipeline. I know. Um, super, super exciting. probably a lot up their sleeve that they're working on that we don't um, even know about yet. So. I hope so, yeah. As the years go on. It'll all be revealed. Definitely. And I'll be very interested to see where the era lines and, up. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where the I, I mean, I'm thinking about the wartime era. I define that like a big catastrophic event. <laughs> um, I'm sure 2020 is probably going to be it would make a big, um, make a big case to define an era there. But mm -hmm. um, super, super great. We want to hear from you. This is definitely a very hard thing to rank mm -hmm. um but we want to know what your top three are so if you're watching on youtube let us know your top three below if you're listening on a podcast platform go to youtube <laughs> and, yeah, and no write comment. it in the comments or you can hit us up on instagram uh, comment on our latest post or whatever you want to do um we just love hearing from you mm -hmm. um we are through we threw a giveaway this week already we the winners have yeah. probably been announced by this friday um right. but we want to thank you for all four thousand of our instagram followers it's crazy to think that we have um you know people that listen to us and who follow our page. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't be any more thankful um, than we currently are because you guys are just the best. Um, yeah. Every time we feel a little bit like, of burnout or, you know, a creative block or whatever, it's, it's so encouraging hearing from you guys and just hearing that you love the show. And, yeah. you know, anytime we hear anything like that, it just gives us the drive to keep going and, figure out more fun things to talk about and yeah. create. So thank you so much for everything, all the reviews and all the connections that we have made uh, on social media. It's just been a blast. And it we're, really we're, has. we're having so much fun with it still. Yeah. Over two years in. I bet that's crazy to think about. But Nuts. we've got our hundredth episode coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. It's so crazy. It's blown by. And um, yeah, we just love creating it for ourselves because we love talking Disney, but also for you guys. Um, you guys have just really encouraged us. And so we thank you so much. And with that, we will see you all next week. Bye, guys. See you. See you then. Bye.